Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry. Uh, I'm uh, a little bit afraid to present after Anton because I, I, I started to realize that serverless architecture is, might be, you know, the future for some developers. So some developers will become, you know, like business developers and then you would have system developers with birds and glasses. And, 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 and this talk is only re relevant for system developers. So if you are writing cool business applications, probably you, you don't really need it. Uh, but until we are there in serverless uh, Nirvana, I think it's an uh, interesting talk still. Uh, so basically, what I wanted to talk today about is uh, to refresh your memory about Java virtual machine uh, memory areas and how it's uh, built, some garbage collection principles, uh, introduce two most popular garbage collection algorithms, CMS and U1, how it's configured and uh, how can you uh, measure and see what's happening inside your JVM. So who of the attendees thinks that they know what's happening inside JVM regarding garbage collection? One. Ah. One and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> Okay, then it, it's a great audience, actually, because I don't know either. <laughs> but I'll try to pretend that I do. So memory management. Uh, so th th that's quite simple. So you, you remember good old C++ times? I, I don't remember. I didn't have them. So when, whenever you are allocating memory for something, you have to not forget to deallocate. And sometimes you forget, not because you're, you know, lazy or something, but code might be a little bit tricky, some exceptions, or whatever, cycles, loops, so on. So JVM is great, it cleans garbage after you, like some other languages, Python, Ruby, Go now, and, uh, but it, it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want. So you could still run into some typical memory related problems and issues. So number one, uh, the dreaded memory leak of Java. Uh, number two, stop the world pauses. So stop the world is a kind of uh, term which uh, Java programmers describe a, a, a moment in time when your JVM is doing nothing except garbage collecting. So all the threads are being stopped and only garbage collection is taking uh, place. And if you have your application has only one uh, node, it stops completely uh, uh, processing any requests. Of course, if you have X nodes of your applications and the chance that all of them are garbage collecting at the same time are significantly uh, less. High CPU consumption by GC, for example, I've seen cases where GC is taking more CPUs than your application and memory fragmentation. So after a while, even though you in theory have memory to allocate new objects, but you, you can't. Um, it's like a disk uh, fragment, uh, fragmentation. <coughs> So uh, these are two <coughs> patterns. So these are charts showing maximum uh, Java heap size and actual taken. And so this one shows uh, normally functioning uh, JVM process. And <coughs> you could see uh, that there are small spikes and large spikes. Not like not a spike, but a cliff, you know. And uh, what it says to us that something is happening inside JVM and uh, there are uh, like uh, small things happening and large things happening. So we'll try to find out what are, are those actually, uh, what, what does it mean? And, and this is actually a, a bad pattern. If you see something like this, you could tell your boss that you're in trouble because it means that your memory consumption is growing over time and you have a memory leak somewhere, which you have to fix. And that's a free, free advertisement of Plumber, actually. Uh, so, <clears throat> why do you need to know GC? Mm. Some people would say, well, I don't know, I don't need to know it because the JVM is a very smart thing and it will do everything for me. I just need to write business code. But, uh, you could do like this, but I think that a professional developer has to at least understand, in theory, uh, what's going on uh, under the hood. 
like I'm driving for 10 years, but I don't have a clue what's going on under the hood. But I, I do have certain different thoughts about that. Uh, I mean, I, I do have a clue, like there's the engine and stuff, such, but uh, I can only, you know, pour the liquid for wind. But anyway, so I understand that if you're an expert <coughs> Java developer or want to be an expert Java developer, you have to see the patterns of your memory consumptions, which will give you a better chance of finding actual problems in the code, right? So uh, otherwise, you would be just staring at this chart and saying, I don't know what's happening. Let's call a consultant. Uh, okay, but <coughs> a word of warning, in any case, don't optimize prematurely, so don't pretend that you write an optimal code every day and then, you know, think about every object if you want to allocate it or you don't want to allocate it to relieve some stress from garbage collector because actually <coughs> nowadays creating an, uh, a few hundred objects is, is, is nothing and it's really cheap. But there are other problems you could run into. So first, very basics. Uh, let's revisit what actually goes into heap memory. So as you remember, uh, the JVM is uh, separated into these data areas. So the, the topmost are thread bound sort of. So for every active thread, you would have uh, these uh, memory areas created. And the most important part is JVM stack. So it's what's being uh, your primitive variables which are being calculated at the moment, references to objects which are being processed at the moment in the active thread. Uh, there's there are also some, yeah, PC register, whatever. <coughs> and uh, then uh, the second uh, large part is, uh, well, let's say, meta theory and runtime constant pool. So that's where your compiled stuff uh, and, and bytecode gets loaded into, and the heap uh, so that's what we will be talking about today. So heap is the largest part of uh, your JVM process memory, and it contains all the active uh, objects you're instantiating in your program. <coughs> so really, really small ex exercise. Uh, so what what goes where, right? So for example, in i equals one, where where, where is it stored? Six. Why? Yes, in, in a register, and kind of, it should go into stack and come into register to, to, to have some calculation based. So, but for example, new object would always, uh, you, you would have a reference to an object in your stack, but an object itself, a, a memory data structure, would be created in a, in a heap memory. Uh, and, 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 and so on. Like uh, objects go to heap, uh, references, and primitive stays in, in the stack. But, but also, it, it's not, so for example, this is an example of a primitive which is uh, instantiated and used only inside the method. If you would decide to keep it for a longer time, it, it also would go to, to heap memory. No, as an as an as an int integer and int separation is just a kind of syntax sugar. Uh, so <coughs> now heap size is controlled by uh, famous arguments minus xmx and minus xms. So you probably know them. So <coughs> this would be the <coughs> if you are on the operating system, if you measure your uh, uh, Java process memory, you would get uh, all of this, right? But it doesn't mean that this is the size of the heap, because inside your process you would have some uh, JVM native stuff, uh, you would have uh, space probably left for some off-heap storage, and then you, you, you would have a heap with a working set of objects and some garbage which needs to be uh, uh, collected and, and, and cleaned from time to time. So basically, your active size of, of heap memory is fluctuating over time, and if, if it hits the ceiling, then you're in trouble and you're getting out of memory exception. So <coughs> the very first slide 
before we talk about garbage collection algorithms is this. So, uh, in garbage collection theory in Java, there's one assumption taken that the longer objects uh, are left inside your JVM memory, the more valuable there are and the less uh, chance and there's a smaller chance that they would need to be discarded anytime soon. So an object which is just created has a significantly larger probability to be discarded immediately rather than the object created one hour ago and, and which is still needed by someone. So if your program doesn't obey these rules somehow and, the, I don't know, and, and kind of breaks it completely, then uh, Garbage collection algor algorithms would have a problem uh, dealing with such situations. Now, <clears throat> if we zoom into heap memory, and heap memory is a uh, one uh, kind of sequential uh, memory area, it's further split into regions. And you could say that there are four different types, main types of regions. The first one is called hidden, uh, and that's the kind of, uh, because uh, all the newly created objects, which are pure and clean, go to hidden first. Well, that's, that's, that's how it works. So that's a memory area for a newly created objects. Then there's a survivor space. So something bad happens in, in hidden, and only survivors are left in the further memory area. And either something is called tenure, something is called old generation. Uh, this, is, this one is for survivors who have who survived 10, 15 uh, cataclysms and, and are uh, tenured enough to be placed in, in the next uh, level. Sort of. And there's one special. So <clears throat> before uh, Java 8, it was called permanent, uh, uh, permanent generation. Now it's called metaspace. Uh, so the difference is that permanent generation was supposed to be not garbage collected at all. So now metaspace could be garbage collected, but it's very, very similar to, to the permanent generation still. And so as I've told, what happens inside JVM is uh, object promotion. So it's being allocated, it, go, it goes to Eden, then it goes to young generation, then it goes to old generation. And <clears throat> there's the survival of the fetus. No, not all objects would ever end up in old generation. Most of them would die young uh, and, and will be discarded by garbage collectors. Uh, it means that JVM actually stores some sort of a counter for every object, virtually, uh, of how many garbage collection cycles do you survive in order to say, okay, after one, I will put you into young generation. After 15, I will put you into old generation. So every uh, object in Java would have a counter like that. But you can see it. It's, it's in, in, in deep inside. So uh, how do we decide what to collect? Uh, we are collecting garbage. And garbage means unreachable and useless objects. How do we know if it's unreachable? Uh, by traversing a graph of relationships. So there's a concept called GC roots, which is objects we certainly know are required by someone right now, and we shouldn't uh, think of garbage collecting them. Uh, then we could uh, see these GC roots and see what they actually need to function. Uh, so traverse the relationship between objects one to another in, in, in uh, method way. And then we could uh, find this kind of subtrees of relationships of objects which are alive. So we can't garbage collect them. <coughs> so the GC roots are a local variables of currently executed methods. So all of the threads, uh, all of the active methods, all of the pointers to objects in heap are considered to be alive. Active threads themselves, because threads are objects, uh, and uh, static fields of loaded classes. So that's the favorite place where you have memory leaks. So if you have a static uh, vi variable 
and you have some map or list or data structure which is growing over time, it will not be garbage collected at all, never, unless uh, unless some special circumstances occur, let's say. Uh, that's why it's discouraged to have anything except simple variables like strings or integer as stat static classes. Um, okay, so what would an ideal GC algorithm look like? So it has to have predictable pauses, so it, it cannot uh, say, oh, wait, I'm doing your garbage and not respond for five seconds. It, it has to have uh, low latency, so we, we need to know when is it going to clean garbage, how frequently, and how long time would it take? If we should support large heaps, by large heaps I mean, I don't know, 10 gigabytes and more, uh, not CPU intensive, and use memory efficiently, not to create fragmentation. So that's an ideal GC algorithm. So actually, if you would uh, start digging into <coughs> uh, Java Hotspot uh, documentation, you would find out quite quickly that there are at least four major garbage collection algorithms. And when you type Java minus jar spring boot dot jar, you actually maybe are not aware what uh, garbage collection algorithm is, is, is being uh, uh, triggered. So I, I can tell you either because the settings are platform specific and are dependent on uh, CPU count, on RAM count on your machine, and on operating system, and on Java version number. So, I don't know. Probably it would be uh, CMS. Probably, but maybe not. Uh, so, there are four of them. You could use special flags and pass them to Java process. And <clears throat> what actually happened in Java 9 is going to be released quite soon, but you already are having a working uh, you could download the working version of, of JDK 9 and play with it. Uh, so, so G1, garbage first. And actually, th that's an uh, interesting coincidence because uh, Anton gave a presentation about garbage first to garbage collection like three years ago. <laughs> Four years ago, yeah, quite a long time. So now uh, it's, 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 it's a continuation of your talk, basically. <laughs> Yeah, so now uh, G1 is the default. Three or four years ago, it was presented by Anton as a cool new thing you shouldn't really try. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see how fast Java is moving. <laughs> so let's uh, talk about CMS algorithm. Uh, why? Because it's still in heavy use and you could switch it on. Uh, and so. So CMS stands for mostly concurrent mark, mark and sweep. So mostly concurrent because it's not uh, totally concurrent. Sometimes it's serial, and we'll learn why. And it's kind of designed to avoid long pauses because what annoys everyone in Java is the garbage collection pauses. Like if you have one, two, three seconds or more, and you are waiting, and nothing is happening. Okay, this is a switch. How to turn it on? Uh, so let's uh, walk through a graphical uh, kind of presentation of what's happening during CMS uh, garbage collection. So we have this <coughs> memory structures as described, even to survivor spaces and an old generation, which is left big for potential uh, long-lived objects. <coughs> so first, uh, let's say these two uh, uh, memory regions are filled up completely or enough in order to generate uh, what's called the event of uh, uh, e event of minor GC or young uh, generation collection. So there are two, two types of garbage collection happening. If you remember, we, we've seen this uh, uh, chart where you have small spikes and then it consists of a large spike. The small spike is a small uh, garbage collection on, on young uh, objects. Uh, so basically, uh, what, what we would do, we would take all the young objects and put some of those into survival space 
and some of those into all generation space. It depends on an individual counter of every object. So if, if it had survived uh, X uh, young uh, garbage collections, then it would go uh, into all generation, for example. <coughs> so after that, uh, all, all of the young regions were cleaned completely. And uh, objects went either to survivor, and to, to get into survivor region, you, you have to survive just once. Or they went into an old region and uh, found its place somewhere. And you see what's happening, so the, the memory gets fragmented a little bit. So it might, so if you want to create, you know, a <coughs> byte array of 15 megabytes, it might not fit precisely. Uh, and it could happen in, in, in reality. So, <coughs> next what happens is an old generation collection. So that's the second big type of uh, garbage collection. So it's a big spike on a chart. So it happens when old generation is filled up to a certain ratio. For example, 75%. If 75% of my pixels are filled, uh, then I need to start being concerned and, 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 and figuring out how to release memory. So, CMS, old generation garbage collection, consists of seven not so simple steps. Uh, they're quite boring, uh, but the, the important thing <coughs> here is that they are separated to uh, parallel, let's say, and serial. Um, uh, step. So, stop the world, SPW, is, is the one which uh, stops all threats and then your application doesn't respond. If you don't have stop the world, so these uh, processes could actually continue in the background while your application is running and responding. So, <coughs> what's happening, so they've uh, uh, invent, invented an algorithm which would uh, try to or offload uh, as much as possible work from stop the world uh, steps onto parallel steps. But parallel steps wouldn't uh, be 100% precise, which means that first uh, we stop everything and, and collect all GC roots. And uh, collecting GC roots is quite simple because we have, okay, 100 threads. Uh, and then you will find what the threads actually are using at the moment, so it's, it's quite trivial. So you don't have to go uh, deep into object uh, relationship. Then we uh, uh, allow application to, to, to get going uh, further, and uh, one or several threads in, in parallel are, are, are trying to mark all live objects in old uh, generation. So they're actually putting some flags inside uh, uh, JVM. Uh, so it's like metadata about uh, object, putting checkboxes next to every object if it's, if it's being considered alive or, or not. While it's being uh, done, your application might have uh, changed the state of objects already. So new objects were created, some objects were removed, and uh, JVM would know that, and this object would be marked as dirty, like they have changed while I was putting check marks on every object. So then we, we would need to have another cycle of looking at the dirty object, and then some more cycles, and so on and so on. And, and at the end, we would have to, uh, so at some point, we would have to stop guessing, and, and say, okay, now we have to really, really uh, know what's alive and what's not alive. And, and this phase is called uh, abortable print clean because it aborts at some point. For example, after a certain time period. So, okay, you're stop guessing, now we need to stop everything and finally, you know, put all the checkboxes in the right uh, places. So then there's another stop the world pause, a little one, and then uh, we again release your application and we have concurrent with process. So after this phase, we already know for sure which objects were alive and which means 
we know which objects aren't alive, and we uh, and some background processes are starting to uh, rele releasing the memory and reclaiming the space for for new objects in old generation. And then the last phase, concurrent reset, we reset all the counters because there couldn't be two old generation garbage collection happening in parallel. Then we don't need these counters anymore, and next time we will do all the calculations all, all over again. Simple. Uh, right, so that's a kind of depiction of concurrent marking phase. Uh, so, yeah, so something is happening, and, and after that, we've removed a lot of uh, objects in old generation which actually aren't needed and there are no connections from, from GC roots. Uh, but uh, CMS algorithm is deprecated and needs to be removed in ZDK10? Question mark. Uh, maybe not. Because the risk is still that it does outperform G G1 or garbage first in some cases and there's kind of no clear, clear winner. So uh, there's a uh, kind of uh, request for change to Java and JDK1, which said that we need to mark CMS as deprecated. But why it's important? Because the garbage first algorithm is actually built up on top of CMS uh, theory, more or less. So that's the algorithm which is set in by default in JDK9. So it has significant uh, differences and a lot of similarities. So the big difference is that instead of having one hidden couple of survivor spaces and one old generation, all of your heap uh, gets fragmented and split into equal uh, chunks uh, of memory called, okay, uh, again, regions, and they could be from 1 megabyte to 32 megabytes based on your uh, heap size set. And uh, uh, G1 algorithm could assign every uh, region, every block, what it actually is right now. Is it hidden or survival or old? And, 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 and swap them over time. But the point is they're equal in, in size. Um, so it gives uh, kind of a lot of flexibility. Uh, so if we go step by step. So that's where we started. Uh, so we have uh, some uh, blue ones which are old generation and young ones. Again, these are uh, young fresh objects which trigger um, young garbage collection. So young garbage collection is triggered. Uh, we take a look only at those memory regions. Uh, but uh, the, the interesting trick here is that a, a G1 could decide that actually while I'm looking at these young objects, I could actually look here as well. Because I think there's a lot of garbage. So that's why it's called garbage first, because it has some um, uh, tricks to predict which areas have the most garbage and therefore it would be a good idea to optimize one or two areas in addition to young generation, uh, just to, to not to allow uh, that objects to spread in, in heat. And so young generation is stop the world, garbage collection, blocks your machine for a few milliseconds, probably. And after that, uh, everything what, what's left is a survivor space uh, with uh, significantly less data than it was uh, before. And it's put in some other memory region uh, picked up by uh, an algorithm. Um, what, happens th what happens then is very similar uh, to CMS. There's a marking phase where uh, G1 marks the roots of GC and uh, starts this process of figuring out what to throw away, but in this case, initial marking phase isn't stop the world, it could be done in parallel, because there are lots of uh, regions and you could, you could, you could actually 
uh, you, you don't block the whole JVM. And, uh, <coughs> so after that, you might find out that actually in some old uh, generations, there are no more live objects, and those could be uh, removed entirely. And so this also happens uh, concurrently. Then uh, empty regions are removed, and this is a stop the world pulse. When it happens, it restructures the memory regions, and 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 you see completes the marking process of live objects. After after this cleanup and removal, we take uh, what's interesting to us and and copy them to uh, kind of smaller regions and upgrading the objects either to old or still being survivor. But the point here is that the memory fragmentation, the defragmentation is being done, and so uh, the algorithm tries to find the best layout of your memory in order to uh, accommodate more objects and, and not to uh, give you out of memory anytime soon. So that's how garbage first works. It's more non-deterministic uh, than CMS, so you you don't know how exactly it's going to do all its, all this stuff because it depends on data, on counters, on some probabilities, and so on. So it's highly configurable. So I've put only four uh, configurations, for example. So you could say max GC powers millis. It it means that I ask the JVM that, for example, um, garbage collection pulse wouldn't be larger than 100 milliseconds. And, and garbage first would optimize its algorithm in a way to satisfy these requirements if it's possible at all. But maybe it's not possible. So I couldn't say one millisecond because it's not enough. Yeah. So you could uh, play with number of parallel threads which are scavenging and looking for dead objects. You could uh, change heap occupancy percent, which defines when all uh, garbage collection is triggered. So trigger it a, bit, a little bit earlier or, 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 or later. But of course, all of these settings are very specific to the project, to the application you are actually testing. So if you, you can't figure out the optimal settings for everyone, because it, it, it depends on your application allocation patterns. Probably you could figure out the most uh, optimal settings for Spring Boot MVC. Uh, I don't know, maybe. But it, it, it's, it's very kind of specific. So G1 is based on really a similar concept as CMS. There are more magic happening, like what's called R set and C sets, where uh, you, you could have relationships between regions. So you could have young regions, which depend on uh, old regions, and then an algorithm will try to compress them together. So kind of connected objects live together. Uh, there's support for what's called humongous objects. If you have, if you want to have 10, 10 megabytes on a heap, then how is it actually laid out? And there is no best uh, GC algorithm. So all garbage collections are trade-offs between uh, throughput, latency, and heap size. So some of them could perform better on small heap sizes. Uh, other are performing better on large heap sizes. Some uh, are taking less CPU but giving you more uh, stop the world pauses, others uh, on the opposite. And how do we know all that? It's possible actually to, to, to monitor garbage collection. There are uh, four uh, ways how, how you can learn what's happening. I will show you a couple. Um, so first and very simple is JMX uh, J console. Uh, so who knows who've used uh, J console? One, two, three, four. Yeah, Too small number of people. Uh, where I am? No. Wait a second. How can I? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So 
now I am in uh, JDK directory, and if you go to bin, then there's actually a file called uh, jconsole, and jconsole is an agent which is able to connect to any running uh, Java process. So I will execute as just a um, public void main. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't see because it's a new one. And then it appears over here. I can see it. I can connect, and <coughs> I get access under the hood. I could see the memory consumption used. I see it's growing over time. I could actually uh, perform garbage collection. I don't know why. So number of threads, number of loaded classes, so VM summary, and what, what's called mbins, so that's a JMX protocol, which uh, lets, you, lets you know to publish and retrieve all the um, kind of metadata about the JVM or your application. So in this case, there's a folder garbage collector, and I see that G1 is enabled, and I could see some attributes like memory pool names, Eden, survivor, old, and, and settings, and so on. But it, it, it isn't uh, too informative, it's just available by default. Uh, except that uh, you have to open a port if it's a production environment, because it's not uh, using HTTP. Uh, the, the second approach would be using uh, something called uh, Visual VM. Uh, so that uh, probably most uh, um, popular monitoring tool, and it's free. It was open sourced by Oracle several years ago. Um, ah, no, wait, I didn't want to do, I actually wanted to go I actually wanted to go to this one. So it doesn't come uh, bundled with JDK anymore. So what, what's coming uh, bundled is an old version. And to get a new version, you have to actually download it from a website. But it's still free. Uh, so now, yeah, I still have my application running. I could uh, double click. It connects. I have uh, monitoring of memory. Now 50 megabytes out of 128 are consumed. CPU usage, threads. I could take uh, thread dumps and memory dumps, profiler, uh, lots of stuff. Uh, and, and this is the most Im interesting for <coughs> garbage collection. It's a plugin called Visual GC. What it shows is a distribution between Metaspace, all generation, Eden, and survival spaces over here. Uh, uh, what it also shows that the ring threshold is 15, so an object should uh, survive 15 garbage collections in order to be promoted to old. And it also shows how different regions of, of heap uh, are, are, are behaving. So you see, so this is Eden. It grows up until certain point, and then young uh, GC happens, and it goes to zero. Then it grows again, and then again young GC happens, and it, it drops to zero and fills up again. And so survivor and old generation spaces aren't that uh, uh, changing. So this old generation is, wait, is waiting for old GC to happen in order to remove some of the objects. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a very h handy tool, actually. Another thing which you could actually turn off on production is GC logging. So I will turn it off. I will make it a little bit faster. So my super code is generating random byte arrays and randomly either storing it in a static list or not storing it. I just fill memory with useless bytes. Um, so what you could see is that uh, uh, I've enabled GC logging, and uh, you, you could see how theory comes into practice here. So every garbage collection is documented. So uh, from 14 megabytes to 7 megabytes, from 15 to 10. So that's uh, 
Young, which means Young GC, which is also called evacuation phase in G1. So that's the same as uh, Young GC. And after some time, there will be not enough memory, so it's all on Young 60. So let's wait a little bit. Uh -huh. So now it started to do all generation, all, all GC. So it uh, went through initial mark, concurrent cycle, pause, remark, finalize, and cleanup uh, phases I've described. So it shows the milliseconds it took for every phase. So, uh, so what the relevant ones are which are starting with pause, because these are from the world. And for example, for seven milliseconds, our application wasn't responding at all. Uh, other ones were performed in, back, in the background, and, and it's, it's kind of not that scary. And after some time, we have out of memory. Uh, because, yeah, we couldn't free up any memory because it, it was all sitting in a static list. Um, so that's, that's, that's how it looks like. Uh, in case of production environment, there's another possibility of um, uh, taking heap dumps. Uh, so heap dumps could be taken from, let's say, uh, by this special flag, so heap dump on out of memory, or if I'm not mistaken, yes, yeah, so, so it, could be, it could be done from command line as well, whenever you want, uh, it depends on the JVM, and you could also, you could also, where was it? Yeah, no. Ah, uh, I need to, to connect to a new process. And then, hit dump. Boom. So it, uh, Visual VM has heap dump analyzer. You could open a saved file, so that that actually opens a file, and then you could see that uh, most of my uh, heap is uh, taken by byte arrays, and then you could uh, uh, see where where the instance of this byte array are kept, how much space are they eating, and so on. So that's quite a sophisticated tool. It also has a query language. So if you want to navigate through complex uh, object relationships and, and say, find this, which contains that, and so on and so on. So it's really a powerful tool. Uh, and uh, that's basically it. So you, you always start from the defaults and, and see if it's suitable or not, if you have uh, five users per second or whatever per minute, uh, then probably you don't have any problem. But uh, if you want to optimize for some reason, then you start looking at the GC as one of the places where you could uh, get uh, some uh, performance improvement for free, uh, even without uh, actually uh, changing your code, you could tune GC to, to be more aligned with your application and, 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 and it could behave better and consume less CPU, for example, uh, and scale better. But also you could uh, look at, at the GC patterns and, 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 and uh, see how can you fix your code in order for it not to behave like this. But it, it, it always goes in cycles, you have to try it out to uh, figure out a theory you want to prove or, or, or you know, if, if it gets better and do it. And so uh, speaking of Java GC future, uh, so G G Java development process is becoming more and more transparent, I would say. And then, so G1 is the focus right now. It will be probably improved uh, uh, again in JDK 10. And there's another uh, GC algorithm, which I don't know how to pronounce. And uh, it, it claims now to be a little bit more performance than G1, and it's only the beginning. So it will be probably maybe shipped in JDK 10. There will be another cool uh, GC algorithm. Um, so that's probably it. Um, uh, 
Uh, do you have any questions? Do you need it in serverless architecture? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, great question. I don't know. Probably, probably the algorithms are done in a way they don't work like this. Yeah, I don't know. But actually, when 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 you do set your maximum amount of heap larger than starting, it actually increments heap size, but it never decrements uh, your your heap size. And so Java is a very sophisticated project with, I guess, some <laughs> I'm certain lots of legacy decisions, and they've maintained uh, backward compatibility and so on because. There are alternative JVMs which might be, uh, I don't know, I, I haven't heard about decreasing and changing heap sizes. I know that it automatically increases all the time. But, uh, yeah, I, I, the answer is I don't know. <laughs> but would it, be, would it be a good idea? But you can you can get as much memory as you want. So when you provision a virtual machine, you say how much memory do you allocate in an operating system, which means that operating system should allocate memory dynamically. And I'm not sure if that's a good idea or, or if someone actually does it. So I've never heard that you could uh, increase memory just like that. Maybe it's possible, but it's very tricky and nobody does it. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, so that's the point of the serverless stuff that, okay, in, instead of figuring out, okay, I have one node with 10 gigabytes of memory and then I have five nodes and I will be uh, shutting nodes up and down. Uh, but instead, I could rely on some virtualized platform, whatever. But actually, w what you do, you have a cluster of three, four, five machines. Every one of them has a, you know, enough memory, and then you could uh, shut down some of them and, and, and start up. But uh, it, the JVM is very complicated even now, and having more and more you know, dy dynamic stuff into it would make algorithms even even more complex and not understandable. Yeah, I, I think it's just complexity. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, it, it doesn't make sense, or is it possible to somehow compare uh, D1 with the uh, Go and ah. Go uh, garbage collector? I, I, which I, I refer to as next generation garbage I, I've read about uh, this question actually in the internet today. So, so yeah, so the, the thing is that Go claims to have a much better and efficient uh, uh, garbage collection. But yes, well, they do have stop the time. Well, okay, they do. Yeah, it's impossible. That's n n near not stop the time. I, I think. Well, I need to read about it, but one year ago they didn't. They, they did have. Sub you a second. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, and so the, the, the Go guys admit that JVM garbage collector is far beyond the Go one, but the Go or the Java memory kind of legacy and that every object has to have X pointers, which means that in Go you have this small object, in Java you have that small, uh, this large object. So uh, for the same program, Java will be overstressed with so many bytes and megabytes to, to churn through. But in effect, JVM GC would be more efficient if the object would be the same. But they aren't the same. So Go objects are, are, are much smaller. So it, it's a combination of GC, pragmatic, good GC, plus a, a, a mem memory model of, of Go as such. Why, why was, why was Well, because they have this uh, t type uh, structures, uh, and type structure isn't an object, uh, in a sense. It's it's a me it's a memory block, like. But in, in in Java, every object has to have a kind of pointer to class. It has to have a reference and then a heap area and so on. So you couldn't treat object as just a memory block. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But probably the smaller your application is, the more efficient Go would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a, it's a compromise. If you have a too small heap size, your GC would go like this all the time, and it would take so, too much C CPU power. If you have too large heap size, you you you, you would uh, be relaxing for quite some time, and then boom, it all stops, and <laughs> it tries to reclaim gigabytes of memory. So it has to be not small and not big, just somewhere in, <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> Yes, so you determine your uh, footprint. So when you load Spring Boot with all of your jar, how mo how, what is the absolute minimum memory it takes? So your ground zero. And then you, so you, you depend, so you measure, for example, uh, if I do a REST request, it creates 10 megabytes of garbage. I'll have 10 users in one second, 100 megabytes per second. And, and then calculate it. Uh, how, how often do you want to have a full GC and uh, so on? So based on this figures. And Visual VM would show it to you really, really simply. And you would be surprised how much <laughs> memory one REST request would eat, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> uh, okay, then... Uh, one one last question, maybe I don't know. No, and uh, thank you.